Welcome to another Clergy Assembly. It's great to be with you today. Now, all through this term, we've been thinking about forgiveness, but not just about how we can be forgiven, but how our forgiveness actually changes the way we relate to other people. So the Lord's Prayer at the end, which we're going to say after this assembly, says this. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Well, it's easy to say, difficult to do. And I'm going to tell you a story about someone who found how they could find forgiveness, even when they'd done some really awful things. Now, of course, this, bi this story comes from the Bible, but uh, it's from a book called Philemon. And Philemon is a guy that we're going to meet later on in the story. So sit down and listen to the story about a man called Onesimus. Have you ever wanted to hide, to get away from a problem? Have you ever felt like running away? Onesimus knew what it was like to feel miserable and angry. Onesimus was a slave. His name meant useful. He lived many years ago in the days of the Roman Empire when rich people had slaves. And they worked for them, and a slave had no choice but to work hard for their master, ordered them about. And Philemon, his master, was certainly rich, but only rich people could afford slaves. He kept his poor slave Onesimus very busy, and Onesimus got very tired and very fed up. But one day, everything changed. A travelling preacher visited their city, Colossae, and the preacher's name was Paul. You may have heard about him before. So this is the story of Onesimus, the runaway slave. It's a story we can pull together by reading the letter Paul sent to Philemon and trying to piece together what had happened. We don't get all the story. It could well have happened. Yes. Living as a slave was hard work. Onesimus probably started work early at sunrise and worked all day. His master, Philemon, gave orders such as, go and clean my chariot. Onesimus was tired, but he had begun cleaning at once. He was a slave and slaves had to do what they were told or be punished. As he cleared the chariot, Onesimus daydreamed about running away. Could he escape without being caught? by his master or by Roman soldiers. Philemon gave new orders. Get my chariot ready. I'm off into Colossae to hear this new preacher, Paul. He's telling people about Jesus, whom he claims has risen from the dead. I've got to hear this. A short while later, Philemon joined the crowds, listening to preacher Paul tell them about Jesus. We don't know what Philemon said to Paul, but maybe he asked, you say God can set us free. What do you mean? I'm not a slave. Paul had an answer. You may not think you're a slave, but you are. You're not really free, are you? You may not think you're a slave with a master who orders you around, but you do and say things that are wrong. You hurt others, but, and that hurts God. That makes you a slave to the wrong things you do. Philemon thought about this, and he slowly realised, I suppose you're right. I am a sort of slave. I do lots of wrong things. He wondered what to do, and Paul had an answer for that as well. God longs to forgive you if you're sorry and to help you to change. That's what Jesus came to show us. Philemon wanted to hear more, so he invited Paul back to stay at his house. It wasn't easy for a proud Philemon to say he was sorry to God, but he did. Philemon became a Christian. He opened his home as a place for Christians to meet and worship. Everyone seemed happy. Onesimus was happy too, but for a very different reason. His master was too busy to notice what Onesimus was doing, and at last his chance had come. He could escape. Onesimus crept through Philemon's house, packing things he would need to make his escape, and he tiptoed across the courtyard and down into the street. 
He moved quickly and quietly, dodging in and out of the shadows. If he was caught, he knew he would be in big trouble. Soldiers would be on the lookout for him. So he hid during the day and moved on in the darkness. He made his way down to the sea. He had to get far away. Someone might see him, tell the soldiers. He wanted to get to Rome. It was a long trip overland, so he most likely headed there by ship. He made it. A ship was ready to get sail for Italy. Onesimus crept aboard, paid the captain his fare, and once out at sea, Onesimus breathed in the fresh sea air, free at last. But somehow, he didn't feel free inside. Instead, he felt guilty and worried. He travelled a long, long way, all the way from his hometown of Colosse to Italy. Onesimus made his way to the famous city of Rome. We don't know what he did wrong, but soon he was in trouble again. Gotcha! You're under arrest! Big, burly Roman soldiers dragged Onesimus off to prison. Onesimus sat in his cell. No one in Rome knew who he was, and no one knew he was a runaway slave. Better keep that quiet. He had to serve his prison sentence, but then he would be released and he'd be free again. Sometime later, the guards came and moved him. You're going in with a new cellmate, grunted the prison guards. He's not a criminal, but he's been telling people that God will forgive them and set them free. He's causing riots, so we've arrested him. The emperor himself is going to hear the case. Onesimus stared at the man in the cell. Don't I know you? Paul nodded. I saw you at Philemon's house. Aren't you one of his slaves? Onesimus felt scared. Would Paul tell the soldiers who he was? Over the next few days, the two prisoners talked together. We don't know exactly what Paul said to Onesimus, but Paul always encouraged people to tell God how they were being disobedient. Paul always told people how Jesus had died on the cross to take the punishment for sins so we could be forgiven. Paul also spoke about putting our lives right with God with those we've mistreated. We do not know when Onesimus decided to confess the bad things he had done and ask Jesus to forgive him, but he decided to put his right life right with God and become a Christian. Paul hadn't finished. There are things you need to sort out with Philemon too. Onesimus's jaw dropped. Philemon will never forgive me. I've nothing left now. How can I repay him? Paul thought for a while. I'll do what I can. I'll write a letter to Philemon telling him that I will repay anything that you owe. Before long, wasn't long, when, Oi, Anesimus, get your kit together, you're out. The prison guard threw him out into the street. Onesimus breathed in the fresh air, free again. What should he do? Stay in Rome or risk going back to Philemon with Paul's letter? It was time for this slave to be brave. He clutched the letter Paul had written to Philemon and strode to the nearest port. So he got back on board a ship and he sailed back to Colossae. Would Philemon forgive him? If he didn't, well didn't worth bear thinking about what would happen. So still, when he got back to his own country, kept hidden. Soldiers were always on the lookout for runaway slaves, and he thought of all the times Philemon had bossed him about unfairly. Would Philemon treat him as a runaway slave, or as Paul had asked him in his letter, as a Christian brother? During the day, he picked his way, slowly back through the shadows towards Philemon's house. He was a runaway slave after all. Did he deserve to be forgiven? At Philemon's house, he wiped his brow and gulped. 
His trembling hand reached into his bag and took out the letter Paul had written. It started, Dear Philemon, please welcome Onesimus as you would welcome me. Onesimus knocked and the door opened. The big figure of Philemon appeared, casting a shadow over him and, well, we don't know what happened next. Turns out that the letter we've got is the letter that Philemon was given by Onesimus. But you know, there's a story of a very important and very useful bishop called Onesimus. Do you remember he was called useful? That's what his name means. So I don't know, do you think that Onesimus got really angry? Do you think he reported him to be punished by the Roman soldiers? Or do you think that Philemon read Paul's letter and forgave him? Welcomed him back into his home again. Do you think Philemon began treating Onesimus more like a brother than a slave? I wonder, would you have forgiven Onesimus? Well, I hope that Onesimus actually was forgiven because it's a great story of how God's forgiveness works in each of us. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the power and the glory are yours for ever and ever. Amen. Have a great day. See you soon.